So I've spent a lot of time getting things ready in this van for uh, van life, van dwelling. Uh, concentrated quite a lot on things like getting the bed ready, getting the kitchen ready, making sure that there's light and that there's power, there's somewhere to cook, all of those things. Um, and now it's time to think about some of the little extras. So that's what we're going to be doing today, putting in a car radio. I don't want to run the main radio all of the time for a couple of reasons. One, it's going to drain the starter battery. Two, it's going to drain the starter battery. And three, I don't want to be going up the front to alter the controls, turn the volume up and down and stuff. I could have invested in a more expensive head unit for the front of the vehicle, but that's just not what I want to do. I don't want to spend my money there. So what uh, my solution to this was to buy to buy a head unit, a radio head unit. Um, I found this one on Gumtree and it was literally, you know, 15 quid. Uh, it just so happens that this one is, is in particularly good order. Um, in fact, it looks almost new. Second up, you're gonna need to get yourself a set of speakers. I picked up these ones, similar price, 20 pounds from my local Halfords. Because I can't, I can't put the radio on the bulkhead where I wanted to put it. If I move it higher, then it's gonna protrude out past the bulkhead into the seat, the front driver's seat. Good. If I go even lower, same problem. Every time I lift the lid on the bed, it's gonna hit the stereo. Oh. I've like gone through a few iterations of designs today and I've settled on this. It's a really rough, really basic cradle style um, box. For, for lack of a better word. And the radio uh, cage will fit into here. The radio will slide in, and this will then be mounted on the ceiling, flush against the bulkhead. Uh, what I intend to do is, to the best of my ability with the scraps of carpet I have left, uh, carpet this first. Uh, I'm going to counter sink some holes into these parts on the side, these paddles on the side, um, and then once it's carpeted, I should be able to slit that carpet open slightly, push the screw through, screw that straight into the headlining, into the into the roof, and the screws won't be shown, uh, and the carpet should seal up. It won't look any different. Excuse me. Um, I barely managed to get by with the carpet that I had, but I've kind of covered that now. It's. It's pretty rough looking. It's certainly not my best work, but it's the best that I can do with what I have. Uh, and I feel like once this is, once the glue is completely dry on this, I can probably tidy up some of the edges a little bit better. Uh, they're easier to work when they're slightly dry, uh, because uh, a trick that I learned, once the glue is dry, um, you can just run the blade over the edges and what that does is it breaks up the, the adhesive and it roughs up the carpet slightly so any joins or poorly put together seams can be hidden a little bit better. Uh, sometimes works better than others but I think that's, that's how I will uh, mask some of my shady craftsmanship on this one. As I previously mentioned, I drilled down into the wood first before I covered it in carpet. So there are some holes there ready to accept the screws. The screws should pop straight through the carpet and the carpet should seal around them, meaning you can't see 
Oh, where I've actually put the, uh, the joins in. I'm happy enough with that, that will work. Uh, the cables are through the other side of the bulkhead. Uh, tomorrow's work will include putting some power to that. Uh, I'll need some fused power to that. Uh, and then I will need to install the speakers and run speaker cable from the speakers to the head unit. Hey, so I appreciate you watching so far. Uh, if you'd like to see how I get on with the rest of the install of this car radio in the back of my DIY camper, then please subscribe and you can see the next episode coming very, very soon. No, oh, really soon. <laughs>